Hey, YouTube. Oh, wait. Did you want to say hi? I want to tell them how to go. What did you want to tell them? Guys, um, maybe I'm what round. What's round? This round. Honey is yummy for you. I'm pretty. I'm yummy for you to eat for you. That's at right. At night time when you eat your lunch and your dinner. Did somebody find some hidden Halloween candy that Mommy had hidden because there was too much Halloween candy? I'm not saying that Mommy doses Halloween candy out all year round, including maybe some stockings. Because, you know, hey, free candy. I like to reuse. Recycle, reuse. We've been watching Miss Frizzle on the original um, Magic School Bus on Netflix. I love that show. And they have a recycle, reuse holiday episode that we watched a whole lot. And so now he's been yelling at me, recycle, reuse, really aggressively over like trash that's on the floor, you know, it's like he'll put something on the floor, you know, he'll, uh, some wrapping from a toy or something, recycle, reuse, that's not really how you recycle, reuse, but I like the sentiment. Yeah, he found some of those little sugar round things and he wanted to tell you all about it. He said, you two biscuits, we must tell you, careful, careful, my love. <laughs> so anyway, welcome back to the Wholesome Feed 2019. I can't believe it's 2019. What this guy? Hi. We took a much deserved, much earned little vacation from uh, YouTube and Instagram and being super intense and writing and everything. And I took a little while off um, to just hang out with this little monkey, throw a great holiday season. <gasps> kind of retool, repurpose, um, and fine-tune projects that I have coming up in the pipeline for this year. And that was just so nice. It was just nice to take a little break and to not be like, have I made this? Have I edited? Have I written this? Have I gotten my work done? It was so <sighs> relaxing. It made me so happy. And it kind of made me think about, I you know. I found it, guys. Yeah. I There's all my voice. Oh, I'm good. He found his missing candy. That's really wonderful. And it kind of made me think about, all guys, the wonderful resolutions. Yes. I already watched this guy. Do you want me to show it to them? Or you want to show it to them? Okay. I watched this guy. You have to put it right there if you want them to see the candy. I watched it. <laughs> you lost it, but you found it. I watched it on bear. Thing I can honey. Thing I just had that it's such candy. a good candy. It's not eating. It's really good. No, no, no. I love you, my little unicorn monkey. Uh, you know, all the beautiful resolutions that everybody's posted on Instagram and talking to each other when you see your friends and family and everybody's just resolution, resolution. And I thought maybe instead of a resolution video, which I'm all for, resolutions are wonderful. I kind of have a little goal list that I set at the beginning of the year and I kind of tune it and move it around throughout the year. Um, but I thought six ways to be happy would be a wonderful thing because I actually spent some time on thinking what makes me happy. Um, while I took that little break and just took a little semi-vacation. I was still working, but not as much. I wasn't like going full hog because November, all of December up until the holidays, I was just pushing hard. Um, we traveled and I shot a bunch of travel videos that I'm going to be editing and maybe they aren't going to be in super order, but I'm going to edit them and get them out to you on this channel. Um, it may just take a little while because it's a lot of fun. And I was finishing up a Christmas novella that got published. Thank you for all the love on that one. I'm, I really enjoyed writing about uh, shape-shifting Rudolph the Red News Reindeer and um, all of his romantic intrigues. It was it was one of the most fun books I've written. <laughs> uh, but I was I was really pushing it hard, and even even my son was mentioning, you know, like oh, you're always working. I, I want to play with you more, and I really try to strike a balance in life where I do get a lot of work done. I'm very productive. I make a lot of content. Um, I create a lot of different things, but I don't want that to just be the sole focus, right? My little family's my focus, and sometimes I have to push, push, push so hard that it reminds me, oh, you know, it's good to take time and to just play with this little guy. We have done some amazing, if you follow on Instagram, you saw my Instagram stories, choo-choo track, train building, um, I thought somebody was going to come jump on my head. Exercises that was super fun, and we've, like, built them into forts and multi-stories, and how fun is that to just spend a little time one-on-one -on -one with my little monkey? In fact, I told him, you know, like, now I have to start getting back to a more regular work routine, right? We were on holiday, and he's like, ooh, that sounds like a work to just play with me all the time, though. which I can't disagree with. Um, <laughs> but I thought, you know, what's a good, solid amount of ways that you can work on 
being happier in life. Right? Um, and I thought six was a nice, small enough number. Sweetie, if we can't be quiet, we can't be in the room while mommy films. Remember the rule? Thank you. I thought six was, you know, a small enough number that's doable, but a big enough number that it still inspires and kind of gives you options to pick and choose from. So let's start out and six things, six ways to help make your life a little bit happier. Number one, and I try to do this every year, at least twice a year, I try to do, uh, you know, like a spring and a fall clean out, is throw stuff out. And this can be so hard. I come from a family that hoards their stuff. I mean, my mother loves to keep around all of her things. She likes to have a room full of her clothes that she's ordered. Um, this is really important to her. And I have tried to take a lesson is that less is often more. And that doesn't mean that you have to have two t-shirts and that's all you own in life. I've had phases in life where I've lived like that, you know, where I've had like three outfits and that's all I've picked from. And I've had a couple books and you know, I just haven't had a lot of furniture. I've been very minimalist. Well, I put that there, sweetie. That's my hanger from the closet. I'll put it back. And I always find that a happy balance works best, right? Throw out stuff doesn't mean throw everything you've ever loved, throw out all your child memorabilia from when they were a ton of babies, right? You don't need to be that extreme. It doesn't have to be extreme crazy throwing out, but go through your house this month and toss stuff out. You will be amazed what you'll find. You know, I'm always surprised, like, old receipts from the year that I stuck in a drawer somewhere. You can't doubt us one second. Oh. Um, Oh, I have a little gym monkey behind me. You know, a random bottle of mustard in the back of the fridge I found the other day. I was like, how was this? Um, you know, things that I don't use anymore, clothes that I don't wear anymore, clothes he doesn't wear anymore, shoes that have seen better days. Hey, sweetie, you can't kick things. That's not okay. That's very disrespectful. Do you remember how we talked about being respectful of mommy's space? You need to be respectful, not rude. Mommy! No, that's the rule. If you don't want to abide by that rule, you can go play in your room. I'm the meanest mommy that ever has been. Uh, you know, go through and figure out what you want to go. And you're going to immediately see it. If you see something, you go, oh, I didn't know I had this. And it's not like a spark of joy at, that makes you happy to see it, right? You go, oh, I didn't know I still had that. Just toss it. Give it away. Give it to family. Um, just throw things out. This is like the number one thing for the new year to make you happy. Because then your house, it's easier to keep it clean, it's easier to keep it organized, and it's easier to find things. If you find, like I do, and I live in a small space, right? I live in about a little less than 800 square feet that's livable space, um, if you don't count like little tiny hallways and stuff. Um, it's a small space, and I find that stuff gets misplaced and moved around because I have the deranged monkey that moves things and hides them, and when I'm throwing things out, I find things that I was looking for, I'm able to keep it more organized. Um, and so I find at least twice a year just throw things away. It makes a huge difference. Number two is to, now a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, you just gotta get rid of this all together. But I don't think that's true. You've gotta use your phone to capture memories with your little monkeys, with them. Not of them, not of you, not selfies, or hey, pose, pose, kid, pose. Look at that adorable photo you were just doing, right? But to take photos with them, to have experiences with them. So we'll go out, and, you know, we'll make a funny little Instagram story together. And maybe I don't post it, right? It could just be for us, but we wear the silly little cat ears and he thinks it's funny. Or, you know, he helps me find a really good shot of maybe a mushroom or a snail. And then he helps me take the photo, right? Because it becomes interactive. And he wonders, like, what is all this stuff, right? I do a lot of content creation. I make all these YouTube videos and I do all this Instagram and I do my other work and it's just a lot of things that I am doing on my phone or my computer that he doesn't know about and that's true for a lot of us even if it's not our job maybe it's entertainment what what's mom and dad what are they doing on these devices so I involve him with it and we take fun photos and we do silly things and you know we go to some of our favorite barns we might take silly photos of us in front of a tractor and go right because it Mommy. becomes an air and active way to play Mom, instead of just down. what's mom doing is mom ignoring me that I'll, is really powerful you so you don't have to get table. rid of your phone you can use it as a tool to build bonding time and to interact and to learn and to have fun together and there's a bunch if you have a slightly older child uh, my son's only four so he's not quite there yet but uh there's a, some lovely educational apps that you can use on your phone 
Um, I tend to use educational books for my son instead of the apps just because he's very aggressive. A little four-year-old that can break things, so I find a book works better. But you might have a call from another child, and the apps can work wonderfully. Okay, guys, number three. Don't count calories. Now I know, I know that can be like crazy because you are, this is January, you are starting off your year, you are going to get fit and fabulous and lose all the weight and look like a tiny stick that only eats grapes and has to jump in the shower to get wet because they're so skinny. That doesn't have to be your goal. Um, hi love, how are you? Bye guys. Oh, we can't go yet, mommy's still talking, but you can go play with all your toys that I set up. I can't go get one. Go get Scoop Dog from Rescue Paws or whatever. I can't go get one. He's tied a blanket to the edge of this love seat that I'm sitting on and is climbing it like a little bridge. In case you're wondering like where is Abraham while I'm shooting this? Yes. Um, <laughs> I think that counting calories can work wonderfully for you. If that's for you, do it. And different phases of weight loss and bodies, that's wonderful. But for this, don't count calories. Over obsessing over what you eat is just a thief of joy in your life because you start to guilt yourself. And then the more emotionally guilty you are, the more you want to comfort eat, the more you want to do other things that you shouldn't, the less you want to exercise, the less happy you are around your family and with your family. So don't let counting calories be a thief of joy. Just, you know, replace some meals with a big giant salad with lots of protein, uh, and maybe some tasty nuts and seeds in it. You don't have to obsess over it, right? You know when you're eating bad food. You know when you're eating something that may be a little bit too caloric. You know that. And it's okay to have those. Hey, sweetie, I don't want a giant pile here. Thank you. But don't let it be a thief of your happiness. I love this one. This is something that I have obsessed with last year um, because, I don't know, I just got really into scents and smells is make your house smell good. I have been amazed at the change in my mood, let alone Abraham's, because, you know, he's a wild unicorn monkey that jumps on sofas and piles pills up. Oh, I'm going to help. Oh, I'm going to help. Are you stuck here upside down? Um, <laughs> I got aromatherapy diffuser. You can do that. You can do different scents. You can put different uh, scents on furniture and pillows. and all. There's all different ways to do it. You can do incense. Careful, love. Careful. Remember that the arms of these are delicate. You don't want to break mommy's love seat. Um, there's all different ways to do that, but I have found that making your home smell good, you can bake great cookies, you can make uh, potpourri on the stove top, it just makes you calm and it makes you happy because, oh, something smells great, la la, right? It just triggers that little base part of your animally ape brain that goes, ooh, I like that something good, I'm home, right? So make your home smell gorgeous however you like. I would love to hear in the comments, do you have a favorite scent or potpourri or uh, essential oil that you use? We really like, it kind of changes through the season what we use. And I have just found, I've been totally obsessed with it last year, is just making things smell really, really extra delightful. Um, it's luscious and it's a succulent, happy way to live. Number five is near and dear to my little author heart is to read more good books. Read books that you enjoy. Don't read books that you think you should because they're on a list or books that you've been telling yourself you will forever and then you never actually get around to it because shocker, you're not gonna read it. You don't really want to, right? That's okay. Read books that are delightful, that are fun. And that can mean different things. For me, delightful and fun is I love dirty romance books. This is my favorite thing. I just love great steamy romance books. I love period piece romance books. I just love a good love story. And these are the books that I read to fill up my, my happiness quotient for the week, right? Read good books, whatever that means to you. You're always welcome to buy the books that I write. They're on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Smashwords. So you can read them on like Nooks and Kindles um, and all of that. They're easy to grab. You read them on an iPad. Uh, and I love writing these books, but it's inspired me to also just read a ton. I read a lot of books. I read probably five to eight books a month on average. Um, and sometimes I have to read them, you know, when I'm on the wheel to go at the gym or at night once Abraham falls asleep. Um, and, you know, there's the occasional month where I don't get that many in. But I have found that it makes me so happy to read good entertaining books and to not be afraid to put down a book that's not entertaining me. If it's not working for me, I'm not going to trudge through it. I have very limited time when I get to read. That is my precious little self-care time. Read books that make you happy. Number six is write goals down and check them off your list. Every week I want you to write down one goal on your calendar. So you probably have a calendar in your kitchen or your home office 
or maybe a little cute adorable planner that goes in your purse everywhere. I love those little planners. <sighs> Tell me what your favorite planner is because I want to buy one this year. I have so many things going on that I really need a good planner. And right now I just use a uh, free calendar that I get sent every year. <laughs> you know what? Last year I got a lot of recommendations to make a calendar and sell that on like a, a calendar shop. And I was trying to think what kind of like, would it be my nature landscape photography do I do? Or would it just be like us doing funny things? I don't know. But I thought that was a funny idea. So maybe the end of this year, I will just have my own calendar that I can do. Uh, but I thought that was a hysterical idea. So I can throw this calendar, make my own charts in it. But point being, whatever calendar you have, whatever organizer, write down one goal at the start of every week. And you might start your week on a Saturday. You might start your week on a Monday. You know, everybody starts their week differently. But the first day of kind of when you restart your week, write down one simple goal. It can't be world domination. It can't be, you know, win the lottery. But it can be something that realistically you're gonna do, that you wanna get done, that you need to get done. Write that down. And at the end of the week, when you've done it, because I believe in you, I know that you found this biscuits, get stuff done, because you are busy parents, you need to get things done. Check it off. And you just notice how happy that makes you feel, right? It's that physical action, if you've seen it all week, it may be you checked it off early in the week and you're like, oh yeah, I'm fabulous. Or maybe it took you into the very last day and you just got it in, and you check it off and you're like, that feels good. It feels good to get stuff done. Especially when there's insanity around you. <laughs> so those are six ways, be careful my love, to make yourself a little bit happier. Easy ways, right? Not expensive ways, just easy, attainable ways. <gasps> yeah. So be more happy. And happy 2009. We have wonderful uh, exercise videos I'm going to be shooting and uploading. And we have some wonderful travel videos that I'm editing. Um, yeah, my love. And as Dad, always, Dad, all of our parenting Dad. topics on here. You can have that as in one second. Absolutely, my biscuits. <laughs> trying to kind of diversify what I put on here and just have more fun with it. And have lots of things that are inspiring and playful and educational about parenting. Because I feel like so much of the things we learn when we watch parenting content is things that are fun to observe and fun to learn about and playful and that inspire us, right? Instead of just cold, hard facts. Hey, so until next time, feel free, go down to that description box, hit the like button, boom, the bell, so that you get all my subscribe feed videos, and go over to Amazon, check out some of the books that I write there. I love it when I see you guys writing in and telling me that you really enjoyed one of the books. Until next time, I'm going to see you all over Instagram. I'll see you all over my other YouTube channel and on here. Love you all, and thank you so much for being a part of our new year. Number one, and this is something I try to do. Yes, my darling. What is it? It's a candy. Where? I don't know where the candy came from. No, for me. No, let's put it in the trash. Because it was on the ground. I don't know where. Bridge is breaking. Don't fall down.